one, two, three, four, five. Hi there! So, Casper and I are here to, well, okay, so I decided to show how I made my makeshift uh, photography studio, if you can call it a photography studio, or basically, I want to call it, um, well, I think other terms are home photography studio, but I just want to call it a makeshift because it's not a professional one, or you can say it's an amateur one. So, um, the backstory behind it is recently I uh, joined an art competition, and well, art competition these days, did I join one before? Well, it's more of like a drawing. Um, it's not really like one that you made and then took a picture and then submitted it. But for this one, it doesn't end on making the artwork itself, but you need to take a picture of it. Mine, you see it on the background, so that's my artwork. Um, of course, paper flowers, it has paper flowers on it. But besides from finishing the artwork, I need to take a picture of it. So... I don't want to spend on like renting a stu uh, like a photography studio and then taking a picture of it or asking um, a photographer to take a picture of it. I just don't have a budget for that. Um, and then, well, just a little background. So I have a degree in industrial design um, years ago. <laughs> so I took it years ago. <laughs> well, more than a decade ago. Well, anyway. So, um, on my second year of college, so we had um, two semesters of photography classes. And um, so, because it is, it's industrial design, it's more focused on the product. So, it's like, we need to take pictures of the product. And of course, since we're students, we cannot afford those professional um, studios. So, I learned how to make like a makeshift one. Actually, this is much more amateur because I'm just using very very like For this your video everything. I'm going to show you like how I use like my everyday materials to like make my makeshift photography studio so um um first of all I want to say sorry uh this are um spills of I drank water a while ago and this is ju I'm just very very comfortable with my long sleeves right now it's it's uh what autumn now Yep, so it's kind of cold outside. Anyway, so what are the components of a photography studio? So it's like, um, just go with the basics at first. So you will have a backdrop. So we'll make the backdrop later. So you can choose, actually, with like, I'm, we're at our apartment right now. And the background is quite okay actually but i'm going to tell you like the pros and cons of like um using a darker background or a lighter one and then with just your um i mean lights uh what do you call this um artificial lights or like studio lights or whatever and then um so you will have your backdrop and then of course you will have your lights so you might often hear that the best light i do agree the best light really is the natural light but most especially here in the u.s and most especially now that it's autumn the daylight saving time has stopped or like has um, ended and for most especially for me that um i'm also working i usually get at home most especially right now at six it's already very dark that time so it's like you don't really get a lot of like you, um that's why you also have photo lights for this, um, for, but it's like if you have the chance to like um catch that, that natural light then good for you but most often you really need to like do something about the lights so what i'm going to show you here i am just using my okay i'm i'm going to turn this off oops sorry casper so basically what I have here is, it's like um, a Japanese inspired floor lamp. I'm, I'm going to, yep, it's a floor lamp. So the apartment that we had before back in Indiana, it doesn't have um, ceiling lights. So we just used floor lamps. So I, I have, we have three of this. And then it's like, I figured that 
I'll just use them and I did so um okay anyway let's uh, I'll, I'll, con I'll continue so you have your backdrop you have your lights uh, I'm going to turn this on again so you have your lights ah, sorry what you need next is a camera mine is uh, Lumix it's a mirrorless it's a Lumix GX85 um, so also I've worked at Panasonic Philippines before so that's why I, I knew of the power of or the greatness of Lumix camera so um, what I uh, what I loved about the GX series or um, the one that I saw before or like I learned the power of before was the GX7 I really loved it because it's like even though it's very very dark you can actually have good pictures uh, with the with the GX7. It um, okay. So I'm not a photographer. I cannot uh, like answer all of your technical questions or the technicalities of it. But it's very very good at uh, low lighting and low lit environment. Sorry, low lit environment. I am the competitor of um, Lumix for the mirrorless. Is a Fuji. I'm just not sure you can uh, I'm not the type of person who like reads a lot of reviews for a product but it's like since I've experienced like using it I really loved it so I I, um, I got a GX85 um, you can of course use your phone I for the phone I actually have an iPhone X which I um, got because of the camera uh, it's like I was just hoping for the camera to be more convenient but when i used it most especially for it's not very good for at low lit environment at a low lit environment and it's like yeah it's good it can be good but it's just not as good as a professional one the reason why i'm i chose mirror a mirrorless so when i was a student i used the slr the only thing with them is they're kind of big. Uh, I, I'm just, again, I'm not a photographer. I cannot tell like the, the very, very big techni technical difference between the two. But I I just prefer like something very um, compact. This is much more compact than a DSL camera. So that's why um, I use the mirrorless. So what else? Um, where's the tripod? You can actually wait for a while. You can actually also have a tripod. It's a very, very cheap one. I actually ended up not using a tripod because the two lights that I have is enough. And again, my mirrorless works well. Um, and I can also like umph the ISO, making it like, anyway, it's like, it just works well. <laughs> again, I cannot do the technical thing on this. Um, what do you call it? Um, Anyway, so let's go with the other things. Um, okay, I ended up using the lamps initially. Again, let, let's just go back, like uh, um, um, jump back briefly with regards to the lighting. So initially, um, so the deadline for this was November five. I I kind of finished the artwork on the dawn of November 5. I haven't taken any pictures yet. I need to take pictures. I needed to come to work. That was Monday. November 5 was Monday. So I usually um, go home from work at around 4. But I was able to go home that time by 5. When I arrived here, it was already dark. So in the morning, I already like assumed that, oh my god, I won't have enough light. And also that morning it was so gloomy so I really can't have a light like a natural light so it's like okay I have two lamps here um, initially like lamp um, the usual lighting here in the US for some reason is the um, warm white or the soft white so it has like a warm glow on it for photography I would really really suggest um, daylight which is say like the, your bluish hue um, you can d I, I just would love that rather than the warm because since um, you can also like adjust the warmness the contrast in like your softer a bit like for example now they have a free um, light room for for um, cell phones you can adjust it 
the warmth and the contrast but it's just easier to adjust a neutral picture make it bluer or make it or i'm sorry make it more bluish or make it warmer the tone warmer it's just easier to adjust something white <laughs> rather than like your picture is already warm and then like you need to adjust it to a, like a neutral tone that's for my opinion that's harder um yeah so let's proceed i need a backdrop what are the materials for the backdrop um okay so what i used here is a black cloth so basically i guess you can so i just borrowed from a friend actually i don't i didn't need to buy um you can probably purchase at walmart or if you're in the philippines or somewhere like your local fabric stores so just i'm not sure how many yards is this uh probably three no i think it's just yeah i guess it's three uh three yards so um any type of cloth you want actually or like color but for me black worked um and then for because i need to like hang it if you have uh what do you call this if you have something to hang it already um available then that's good but for me i don't have a clothes line i actually have um the one the i actually have a back backdrop stand but it's like it would take me time to um assemble it so i just figured i'll just make something easier <laughs> So, um, for this stand, what I actually have here is the um like the sides of a shoe rack. Uh, this is the second one. So I have here. It needed to stand, so I actually have um a crate, a small crate which I kind of attached. Yep. For it to stand, and it kind of did. <laughs> it kind of stands actually. So I'm just going to place it here. Yeah, it stands. <laughs> and then I need a pole. So, um, like, for poles, you have a lot of, um, sorry, for poles, you actually have a lot of choices. You can use for everyday objects, you can use your, um, the pole or like the, what do you call this? The curtain rod. You can use that. Um, what are the others? Or you can buy, um, a PVC pipe. Don't pull out the pipes of your like plumbing i'm kidding um what else it's like anything um cylindrical you can use so i'm going to place it here yep and then um so this is my artwork i'm going wait i'm going to kind of lift it so yeah, ta -da 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 -da. this is my artwork. I want it to be like elevated a little. Um, so I used. I need something that would elevate my artwork. So what I have in our house is actually a three-tier shelf. Um, I tried like placing the artwork on top. It's actually like I don't have enough space so What I did was I turned it upside down um, I'm going to show la um, later like how it looks like I'm going to adjust uh, my, with my camera, but for now so So Get your black cloth, and then um, you can like um, what they call this, place it on the rod. But I would like to show you first, like why I opted for a black cloth. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to place my arthur in the stand. Baby, can you move a little? So going back to what I actually did, so I re actually removed the covers which acted as a diffuser for my lamps. So you can you see the effect? So like there, there are like strong shadows. You can actually adjust it by like where and how you place your lights or position your lights. But for me, since I was cramming that time, I just wanted easier so i used black because the effect of it it eats up the shadow at the back the shadows um in the background is not visible so it's just easier for me that way but what you can also do um you can use a diffuser so like what um the how my lamps look like with the covers it acted as a diffuser so the um shadows aren't actually this strong so um i'm, go I'm gonna uh, place it back uh, a little bit later but um okay so for the diffuser if your uh, lamp or whatever you have does not have a cover what you can um actually also use are well i have here like a tracing paper here in the u.s i think you have a you can use a parchment or a vellum paper to cover your um sorry this is so um so but like your tracing paper you can actually cover your lights it, it will kind of diffuse the light i'm not covering everything that's why you still have your strong shadows there but um so this is in if you're familiar with the uh, of professional photography equipment so you with your spotlight you actually have something that is covering it that is translucent so that's a diffuser so you can um do that uh amateurly <laughs> by covering it with something translucent so similar to what i currently have so the covers and also your parchment or vellum paper you can do that um Yep, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to uh, take back or, yep, take back the diffusers and then um, place the background on the backdrop, okay? Guess what? <laughs> The one that I recorded a while ago with all of this did not record. It was on the time lapse, so it's like a bad. Anyway, it was on like times five ten speed. The speed of it is like very very fast. Anyway, it, and it did not record the audio. Anyway, so what do we have here? I so um what I did was I would probably like yeah I probably did include the time lapse version of me like placing it in there. But, so this is how it looks like. So, I realize that I like it better with the diffuser on. It, it the, the lighting is just much more diffuse. It's not that strong. So, the shadows all, also are not that strong. I will just make sure that this is recording. Yes, it is on normal speed. So, that's that's good. Um, so, yeah. I'm gonna post the pictures of, like, what what I um, sent for my entry for the art art contest so the um the big um also it also works um sorry um i also did try the uh taking pictures without the background it also works it also worked but like again i was cramming that time and then my entry is just with the black background but with the um Without the black background, it also works. So just make sure that you have a diffuser on and like it more with the diffuser. Um, yep. Yeah, so it's like okay. Um, I'm going to position myself where you can see the or probably I'm going to cover my. Oh no, it's it's both messy. <laughs> I'm, I'm um okay. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway here is that you can do something great 
or special without really like sh um busting your wallet for it or your bank account or what you what do you usually like say or phrases that you say on that but anyway so my gift uh, okay it's just hard to like remake the something that went on naturally i had to retake it but anyway um i, I just want to go like a bit dramatic here but it's like um i guess the takeaway here so my gift uh is uh, i'm resourceful at the same time as i'm creative so i'm I'm just embracing it so it's like this is the point in my life so i'm in my i'm, I'm 30 i just turned 30 or probably i turned 33 months ago um so it's like i'm listening to this like self-help audiobooks or something it's like embrace yourself embrace your gifts you're very unique you have your gifts you have your like unique traits that make you unique so for me it's um uh create i'm creative and also i'm resourceful um it's probably uh, a product of um being just being able to just have what you need so um my dad is uh, i love my dad i really respect my dad so it's like he brought us what we need like he, he he gave us like all his might he gave us what we need and then so that's why growing up and then i'm also the eldest so i'm very very aware so my dad is the breadwinner and then so that's why i'm very very aware that i really don't have the luxury of um like spending for a lot of things of, of like asking for this and that though the the own the the thing that i remember like i really demanded was my first dslr <laughs> because it's like um, um it's like i tried like making my education very very cheap <laughs> so it's like i think i have the right to like demand for a dslr camera <laughs> but anyway um again but in like in equals to that so i had like my makeshift photo studio because i have a good camera that i need to anyway so i would delve into this matter but again the the takeaway lesson that i want to impart here is you don't need to buy like the very very expensive things um it's like if you have the money then go but check first I, this is like my sop most especially with my, my work now so check first with everything that we currently have and then if we don't have what we need then that's the only like um time that we buy but if, if we have some or that i can find some that i can use use it first rather than buying something new so it's similar to this one take a look at your house as you can see i have my photo um, make sure photo studio at our very very small and messy room i didn't oh yeah the one of the things that i like that i was relaying a while ago was the only thing that i bought for my makeshift photography studio are the bulbs that i use because again we only have the soft um warm white or the soft white which again i i really suggest having like the the new the neutral white or the bluish white anyway but this one you can use i mean if our lights go out i can use them it's not really intended just for the photography it's just this is just a side that i can use it for all the other things are existing i just like looked all over the house for it so again you don't have you can just make your own be resourceful be creative so um that's all yes this is recording so um thank you so much if you like um went all the way and you're still watching me here so thank you very much for watching um you can catch me at instagram i'm very very active in instagram so it's at dinniwinnieblooms.com whatever i post on instagram i also post in my facebook account which is you can also just you know my my all of my handles are dini mini blooms so <laughs> yeah so just yeah and then also subscribe in my website so it's dini mini blooms.com i'm not as active i'm very i'm not as active in my website but i'm trying to like update it from time to time i do um post blogs a bit 
so this definitely would go up to my blog also though I, this will also go in my youtube channel and anyway on all of my me social media accounts it's dini mini blooms i current i just currently don't have a twitter and uh tumblr right now i i never did like learn twitter really anyway thanks for watching again i will not like take any more of your time thanks for watching i really appreciate it so hopefully you can make your own um makeshift studio tag me if you like learn something from me so thank you very much Mm-hmm. <laughs>